Good afternoon. Welcome to another episode of Logan's Devotions. It's great to be together. Wonderful to open up God's Word for another day and see what he has to say. We're turning through to Luke chapter 12 again, but before I read our passage, as always, let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for your word, which abounds in richness and truth. As we turn to this gospel, we pray that you would help us to hear the teaching of Christ for ourselves, as though he was speaking it to our very ears. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Luke chapter 12, picking up at verse 54. He, that is Jesus, he also said to the crowds, When you see a cloud rising in the west, you say at once, A shower is coming. And so it happens. And when you see the south wind blowing, you say, There will be scorching heat. And it happens. You hypocrites! You know how to interpret the appearance of earth and sky, but why do you not know how to interpret the present time? And why do you not judge for yourselves what is right? As you go with your accuser before the magistrate, make an effort to settle with him on the way, lest he drag you to the judge, and the judge hand you over to the officer, and the officer put you in prison. I tell you, you will never get out until you have paid the very last penny. I am really grateful for the amazing work that our translators do for us. I really appreciate the way that they translate the Greek and the Hebrew into English for us. I'm very grateful for the way that they put it in an orderly fashion, uh, break it up into paragraphs, seek to provide helpful little headings. But one thing we have to always remember, I've said it before, I've said it in sermons, and I'm sure I'm going to say it again, the little headings, italicized headings, are not part of the Bible. Sometimes they're very helpful. Other times they're not. And this is one of those occasions. Let me highlight for you what I'm talking about before we get into our passage. So in verse 54 to 56, we have Jesus, in a sense, chastising the crowd for not being able to tell what's going on right in front of them. We'll talk about that shortly. And then in verse 57 through to 58, sorry, 59, according to the ESV, we're then dealing with the, the need to settle with your accuser. And so if you take the headings, what we have here is all of this teaching from Jesus, and then all of a sudden, this important injunction brought by Jesus Christ to stress the importance of making sure you don't end up with a court case, because you won't get set free. That seems very bizarre, doesn't it? I mean, Chapter 13 is going to continue the dialogue of Jesus. His teaching is going to carry on. And I'm fairly sure, while Jesus was in the middle of stressing the nature of discipleship, that he didn't all of a sudden think to himself, you know what, I should probably tell these people what to do when they get in a court case. No, that would be kind of insane. That's not what's going on here. This section that we've just read is intimately connected together and intimately related to what we saw yesterday, or last week, I suppose. If you didn't listen to last week, apart from me telling you to go and listen to last week, let me just point out, verse 49 to 53 is all about what the coming of Jesus at the time he was speaking would bring. So the appearance of Christ in the flesh, the incarnation of Christ, would cause a judgment, a division between those that love Christ and those that hate Christ. He then immediately goes from that, his words to his disciples, to set his focus upon the, the crowd and address them now. And he turns to the crowd and he says to them, effectively, in a nutshell, what is wrong with you people? You can tell what's going on in creation by looking around you. You look at the crowds, you look at the sun, you figure out what's going on, and you can tell what's coming. But I am standing before you, and you are completely oblivious to what's going on. You hypocrites, he says. You know how to in interpret the appearance of earth and sky, but why do you not know how to interpret the present time? 
The grace of God is appearing in me, Jesus says to them. I am the dawning of the sun of righteousness. I am the one in whom God's healing has come. I am he. Come to me and be saved. Come to me, side with me, become one of my disciples and receive all the covenantal blessings of God. But you're blind. You cannot see it, crowd. And then, then with this judgment that he's talked about in verse 49 to 53 and this blindness of the crowd, he now warns them in verse 57 to 59. He says to them, why do you not judge for yourselves what is right? As you go with your accuser, accuser before the magistrate, make an effort to settle with him in the way, lest he drag you to the judge, etc., etc., and throw you away until you've paid every last penny. What's he talking about? Jesus is not talking about a civil magistrate. He's using that. It's like a parable. He's using that to point to something of far more eternal, infinite significance. Yes, there's some helpful instruction here for how we engage with lawsuits and things like that. But there's something far more pressing in the mind of Christ. And that's the reality of the position of this crowd. This crowd is sitting before the judgment of God. They are rejecting the Messiah. They are rejecting the grace of God. Think about that. They are rejecting the free offer of the gospel. And Jesus says to them, beware. The judgment is standing at the door. If you do not settle with your accuser today, you will be dragged before the judge. And thrown away without a key. So, who is the accuser? Well, the accuser is Christ himself. It's not the devil. No, it's Jesus himself. See, Jesus is the one that creates the division, the judgment, right? He is the dividing line. And those who will not settle with him today by accepting the grace that is revealed in the person of Jesus Christ will be brought to the judgment to answer for themselves. On that day, they will stand before the very same accuser. They will stand before the Lord Jesus Christ. And he will accuse them of their sin. And he will enact from them every last penny. And the debt is infinite. And so the great challenge coming out of this passage for us, first and foremost, is have we settled with our accuser? Have we settled with our accuser? Have we found peace with God? Has our debt been cleared? Because if not, nothing else matters but resolving that problem. Secondly, since this is the case, how urgent must we be to call people, to summon people, to settle with their accuser? And thirdly, as we see the blindness of the crowd, we should be reminded, firstly, of the incredible grace of God to us, because we were exactly the same. And secondly, how, we, how dependent we are upon God to open the eyes of the blind. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for today. Thank you for this word. Help us, Lord, first and foremost, to settle with you. And secondly, to summon others to do likewise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.